Yeah, thank you for the introduction. Um, today, uh, I, my talk will consist of two parts. Uh, first, uh, I, I want to give uh, the overview of the problem and maybe uh, justify why something called simple problem might require part two. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in the second part, uh, uh, I'll do some calculations, uh, time permitting. And uh, part two will be more calculations. Uh, so uh, the pro uh, let me first uh, state the result. Uh, there are two models uh, that uh, are somehow related to each other. Uh, some answers are the same in, in the two cases. And one model is this. Uh, it's a many-body Hamiltonian. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, fermionic sites. Uh, each site is described by uh, uh, a Majorana operator. Uh, I write it uh, chi sub j. And uh, they have this commutation relation. without a factor of two. It's just uh, more convenient. Um, and uh, they interact. And uh, the interaction is all told. Uh, each Majorana interacts with uh, all the other Majoranas. And the Hamiltonian is I'm trying to uh, write it big so that people on the back can see. I hope it's OK. Uh, so it's a four body interaction with uh, uh, some coupling constants. And uh, those coupling constants are random. Uh, it's a, a quench disorder model, meaning that. Uh, uh, those jades are uh, chosen randomly, but uh, they're time independent. And uh, we need to specify the statistics of those jades. Uh, the distribution will be Gaussian, though it's not so important. Uh, but uh, the important thing is, if we pick any side j and uh, consider all the interaction uh, involving j, oh, actually, I forgot uh, normalization problem. It's 1 over 4 factorial. Um, uh, we, we pick uh, side J and consider <coughs> sum over K L M. And uh, this is uh, the disorder average. Uh, this is supposed to be uh, a constant J squared. And uh, the normalization is 1 over 3 factorial. Um, so uh, this j uh, is proportional to the uh, coupling strength times some power of uh, the number of sites. There are n sites. So uh, there are two parameters. One uh, large parameter is n, so the number of sites. And uh, another parameter is this, uh, lambda, uh, which is the coupling uh, constant. It's uh, beta, the inverse temperature, times j. And uh, the model uh, can be solved in this uh, limit for any lambda, uh, large or small. Uh, but uh, the interesting uh, holographic behavior occurs at large lambda. So uh, this is uh, the holographic limit. The mean value of j, jklm, is zero, is it? The mean value is zero. Uh, so, uh, so oh, zero mean. yeah. Are, are the J's totally anti-symmetric, or is there an effective quadratic term that comes from symmetric pieces in J? Yeah, they are totally anti-symmetric. Okay. Totally anti-symmetric. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, this is uh, uh, the first model, and uh, the second model uh, is gravitational. Uh, we 
consider this metric. And uh, I'll write uh, the metric in the uh, Schwarzschild uh, form. Uh, it's similar to uh, the black hole metric. Uh, and it has uh, two coordinates. It's a one plus one uh, system. Uh, there is some uh, radial coordinate r, and it's dt squared plus d r squared over f of r. And uh, uh, if it were uh, a high dimensional system, there would be a term like uh, r squared d omega squared. Omega is uh, the transversal coordinate, but uh, in 1 plus 1, we don't have that. And uh, the specific uh, form of f um, is. Um, So uh, there are uh, two parameters, so, so it seems. Uh, uh, a is like uh, the Schwarzschild radius at uh, r equals a. Uh, this function vanishes, and uh, that's the position of the horizon, uh, though it's not a singularity. It's uh, just uh, uh, the singularity in this uh, form of the metric, in this coordinate system. Uh, and uh, little r going to infinity uh, corresponds to the ADS asymptotics, and uh, it works as a mirror. So if we uh, draw the radial coordinate uh, r, it starts at a, uh, and this is the horizon, and uh, large uh, uh, values correspond uh, to the ADS asymptotics, and the ADS space uh, reflects uh, any particles or radiation in, uh, back. Uh, so uh, geodesics uh, go this way and then return. Did you say this is going to be just a two-dimensional gravity space, or can you do it as a, as a dual to higher dimensions also? Uh, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, of course, in two dimensions, uh, there is no Einstein theory of gravity. And uh, that's a problem. So uh, I'll elaborate uh, uh, what kind of correspondence I actually have. But uh, this is uh, the form of the metric uh, that uh, reproduces the correlation functions. It, it might. Scale invariant, what, what do you mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, it is, it is, yeah. I, 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 in, in the large lambda limit, it has a conformal <coughs> symmetry. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, it's um, actually a sticky, uh, a st a sticky point uh, whether we should uh, introduce uh, additional coordinates or maybe additional fields because uh, the 1 plus 1 gravity is not well defined. Uh, and maybe uh, to define a real dynamical model of gravity, one needs uh, some extra fields, like uh, the size in, in the transversal dimension. But uh, that I don't know. And uh, one can uh, actually eliminate uh, both parameters from this form and just write uh, uh, r times r minus 1. Um, so uh, this is model two. Uh, now, uh, how do we compare these two models? Uh, let me give you some physical intuition uh, uh, about uh, the kind of uh, phenomena that occur in both models. So, uh, in the first model, uh, we can think about a single site, J. And uh, it interacts with other sites. And uh, uh, the other sites uh, exert some force on, on this uh, J. There is uh, an effective field. Uh, and that field is defined by uh, just sum over uh, KLM, J, J, K, L, M. 
say uh, chi k, chi l, chi m, and uh, let me call it uh, uh, O of j. Uh, and uh, I call it uh, the bus field, uh, the heat bus field. So uh, the other sites uh, uh, act as a heat bus. Now, uh, uh, this is a sum over a large number of terms. And uh, those terms are statistically independent. So it, it is a Gaussian variable. It's uh, uh, basically a free uh, Fermi, uh, Fermi field. Um, uh, and uh, uh, I use this notation O uh, uh, because in ADSFT people also use O. So uh, uh, this is uh, one field. I, I call it the bus field. And uh, uh, chi j uh, uh, sitting here, uh, 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 let me call it uh, the probe field. And the idea is that there is a heat bus and we stick a thermometer and measure the temperature using uh, this guy. Uh, and uh, these two are dual. Uh, now, uh, what happens uh, in the gravitational problem? Uh, one can uh, write this metric and introduce uh, a Majorana fermion moving in this metric. Uh, and uh, that Majorana fermion, let me call it psi, uh, it actually has two components. Uh, like uh, a vector. And uh, uh, as we go to infinity, uh, we can uh, actually solve uh, for normal model in, in, in the whole range of R. But uh, when we go to infinity, there is a certain uh, asymptotics. And uh, this is uh, proportional to uh, uh, R. Uh, to the minus delta. And if we uh, make a coordinate change, it will be z to the delta, the, the usual thing in ADS, uh, times 1, 1, times uh, O. And uh, uh, this guy depends on uh, uh, R and T. And O uh, depends on T only. Uh, and uh, there is another field uh, with a different uh, exponent. Uh, it's a 1 minus delta rather than delta. Uh, and uh, uh, at the boundary, it corresponds to chi. Uh, so, uh, but uh, it, it, it's more physical to consider this field O because uh, the holography is for the heat bus. It's uh, an effective description of the heat bus, not, not uh, uh, a probe uh, that is used to measure the temperature. So the, uh, the physical idea is this. Um, this O defines the, asymptotic, uh, the asymptotics at infinity. And it, it has some uh, uh, correlation function. Uh, or its spectral density. Uh, at the horizon, uh, there is also some correlation function. And the horizon is basically uh, a black body. And the spectral density is constant. So uh, let me write two equations. Uh, the spectral density uh, for some field O uh, Uh, is a function of omega, and uh, it's defined as uh, integral. This is the anti-commutator of uh, Fermi operators. Okay. And uh, uh, at the horizon, is constant. Uh, well, uh, at the horizon, we shouldn't use O. We should use uh, uh, psi, psi at the horizon. 
uh, and uh, at the boundary, uh, now we may use O. Uh, it's uh, up to uh, a constant, this thing. This is the same function uh, that can, uh, can be calculated for this model. So uh, uh, the idea is that uh, uh, there is this space, and it's uh, like uh, a linear filter using the electrical engineering uh, language. Uh, and uh, we've just chosen uh, the, sh uh, the metric so that uh, it's the right filter. It trans uh, transforms. Uh, uh, the standard bus to this special bus. And of course, it's a trivial statement. Uh, whatever uh, uh, function of frequency uh, you get, you can uh, adjust your filter to, reprodu uh, to reproduce uh, uh, this thing. So uh, it's, it's not real physics. Uh, now, um, I, I actually uh, struggle. Uh, to tell whether uh, it's a real uh, ADS CFT correspondence, meaning that uh, we can define some local bulk observables or not. Uh, I'll tell you more about that. Uh, however, uh, uh, there is more than just uh, uh, matching of, of uh, the two point functions. Uh, both models have symmetry, and uh, the, the first model has a conformal symmetry. Let me uh, write it. Uh, if we introduce this variable, z to pi over beta times t, uh, then uh, in the large coupling limit, uh, the equations for that model have uh, 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 this symmetry. It's uh, PSL2R. Uh, uh, the uh, invariant under Mobius transformations. And the Mobius transformation is PSL uh, 2C, but uh, depending on the physical problem, whether we solve it in uh, uh, real time or imaginary time, uh, we pick uh, a real subgroup in, in that complex group. Uh, this is the symmetry uh, of that model. Uh, the second model also has a symmetry uh, because uh, this metric is actually uh, a patch uh, of, of the ADS space. So the ADS space is, um, uh, you can write it uh, in various ways. For example, uh, uh, you can draw a, a hyperboloid. And uh, introduce coordinates rho and uh, there will be uh, some coordinate u and another coordinate uh, uh, v. So uh, there are three coordinates. Uh, rho is uh, uh, along the axis of the hyperboloid. Uh, now, uh, we can parameterize uh, uh, this hyperboloid uh, uh, in this way. Uh, we say that rho uh, is uh, and theta and uh, uh, tau is uh, the angle uh, in this direction. And uh, uh, in, in these uh, coordinates, uh, the ADS space uh, becomes a strip. And the vertical direction uh, is tau. It's uh, the time going along the circle. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, theta. And the metric is uh, 
is conformal. Uh, and uh, in this coordinate system, uh, we can identify a region uh, that is isometric to, to that thing. And it is this. Uh, so uh, the coordinate, uh, the lines of constant uh, t go like this. Uh, this is And uh, the line of uh, constant r uh, go like this. And uh, uh, this mesh uh, corresponds to uh, the rectangular mesh. So uh, this uh, gives you the geometric intuition. Uh, and uh, uh, this point is the space-like horizon. It's just a point. Uh, uh, this line is the future uh, horizon, and this is the past horizon. Uh, now, uh, the hyperboloid uh, has a symmetry. It's uh, uh, SO21, and it's the same symmetry group. Uh, more importantly, uh, when we uh, apply the symmetry transformations, uh, we can focus uh, on the neighborhood of this point, and uh, uh, we can compare uh, different uh, tr uh, transformations uh, in terms of uh, T or Z or in, in terms of uh, these coordinates near the horizon. And uh, there is a physical interpretation. Uh, in terms of z, there are uh, uh, three symmetry generators. Uh, one uh, is scaling. Uh, and uh, it's um, uh, z going to uh, 1 plus uh, Psi is uh, the deformation parameter. It's an uh, infinitesimal number. Um, uh, this is a time translation. Because z is uh, the exponential of t, and so uh, if we uh, do that, we just shift, uh, shift in time. Uh, and uh, in terms of this picture, it's a Lorentz transformation. Uh, there is another thing, z going to uh, z plus psi, and that corresponds to uh, a shift uh, in, in in this direction. Um, it's not not the same v as, as there. Let me I'll put a, a tilde in here, or maybe capital V. And uh, uh, there is also a shift uh, along uh, the u direction. It's uh, z minus 1 going to z minus 1 plus psi. Uh, yeah. Of that? I did some averaging over this order. What, what are you? How do you? Uh, I'll show you. I'll show you that. So uh, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I want to stick with my plan. I want to finish this general thing and uh, then to calculate. Uh. Sorry, do the sections of symmetry preserve the wedge, or do they move the center? Uh, they move the center of the wedge. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, this symmetry preserves the wedge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Uh, now, uh, let's try to make it a, a, a little more physical. Uh, how do we uh, generate those symmetries uh, in a physical problem? Or what do we calculate uh, on the boundary that would correspond to uh, uh, those two uh, symmetries, shifts along these two directions? Uh, one needs to calculate uh, a four-point correlation function. 
And uh, this four-point correlation function, in general, has this form. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll start with D because uh, sorry, you're supposed to read it uh, backward, right, right to left. This is a strange correlation function. Uh, the times uh, alternate, it's zero t, zero t, and. Uh, uh, of course, uh, you should ask how uh, one measures uh, this correlation function. And uh, uh, <laughs> I have to answer that uh, uh, you cannot really measure it on a real system. You need uh, absolute control on the system to measure it. There are basically two ways to, to measure such thing. One way uh, is uh, a loschmidt echo thing. Uh, we evolve the system forward in time, then reverse the Hamiltonian and uh, let it evolve backward. It's hard to do, but uh, people actually do it in NMR on a small system. Uh, and uh, another uh, option, which is more interesting, is to consider the thermophile double. Now, uh, this uh, thing about uh, the thermophile double and how it evolves, uh, it, it has been uh, a hot topic recently, and uh, uh, Stephen Douglas uh, wrote uh, a, a few papers on this subject. They actually calculated uh, uh, various effects uh, and uh, they uh, uh, related to scrambling. So I'll use the same, uh, the same terminology. It's uh, scrambling um, uh, on a single system uh, and it uh, corresponds to some effect uh, on the thermophile double. Uh, how do we uh, measure this thing on, on this thermophile double? Let me just uh, uh, write. Uh, this state, uh, this is called uh, the thermophile double. And it's actually quite analogous to this equation. So the only difference is uh, uh, changing uh, uh, ket, uh, ket to bra. And uh, uh, these two things are uh, uh, partial transposed uh, because uh, f flipping uh, uh, the bra means um, uh, transposing. Uh, uh, so uh, any calculation uh, done for this state uh, can be uh, transformed to a calculation uh, done for uh, the square root of rho. And for example, we know that uh, uh, the square root of rho commutes with the Hamiltonian. And in terms of this state, uh, the multiplication uh, on the left means uh, uh, acting on the first subsystem. The multiplication on the right means uh, acting on the second sus subsystem by the transposed operator. So this equation becomes uh, H uh, tensor identity minus identity tensor H transposed psi is zero. Uh, now, uh, if we uh, start with the thermophile double, introduce some perturbation. Uh, U at time zero, so we start with uh, psi, then uh, introduce U of zero, uh, and it will, be, uh, it will act uh, on the left side. So it's U of zero tensor identity. Then we measure some uh, entangled observable. And uh, then we measure uh, 
uh, basically we calculate the, the matrix element. Uh, this thing can be transformed to an operator like that for a single set. Um, so uh, this observable uh, uh, corresponds to uh, an evolution of the thermo uh, thermofield double. The thermofield double is highly unstable. If we introduce a, a tiny perturbation to uh, one part, uh, it will grow exponentially, in, in general, in, in a large variety of systems. Uh, what happens in this system? Uh, this correlator uh, grows exponentially. Let me just write it. So the correlation function, and let me uh, consider a particular correlation function. And we can uh, put uh, j here, k okay, here, j here, k okay, here, and we can plot it as a function of t. And uh, first, uh, let's assume that uh, j is not equal to k. Uh, then this thing uh, starts at, uh, uh, at one quarter. It stays almost the same, and then goes down. There is some uh, characteristic time. This is j different from k. Now, if we uh, use j equal to k, it's different. It uh, goes down to about minus one quarter. And it stays close to minus one quarter and then goes to zero. Uh, now, uh, there is no surprise here because uh, the behavior at small times is given uh, by uh, Wick's theorem, it's, uh, by two-point functions. And uh, this regime uh, at small times uh, it's a uh, T of the order of uh, copper to the minus one. Uh, I'll give an estimate for copper in a moment. Uh, this is the Gaussian regime. And uh, on this region, uh, non-Gaussian corrections develop. E eventually, uh, they uh, will kill any correlation. And uh, the characteristic time scale here is uh, called uh, the scrambling time. Uh, it's kappa to the minus one times uh, uh, the logarithm of uh, this big number. Uh, actually, uh, a more correct scaling seems to be a logarithm of the entropy, but uh, uh, it's just uh, proportional to n. The entropy is proportional to n. Uh, so, uh, what is kappa? Uh, kappa uh, is equal to uh, 2 pi over beta in the strong coupling limit, or it is uh, of the order of j in the weak coupling limit. Uh, the weak coupling limit is not holographic. And uh, 
this copper determines uh, the exponential growth of correlations in this regime. If we uh, calculate uh, this thing, minus uh, uh, CA times DB, uh, the reduced correlator, uh, it's of the order of 1 over n times e to the kappa t for t um, um, this is the uh, uh, exponential growth, and then it will saturate at this point. So uh, kappa uh, is the growth exponent. It's like uh, the Lyapunov exponent uh, in a classical system. Uh, and in fact, uh, such a correlator was considered uh, for a semi-classical system, for a single particle, basically, by Larkin and Avchinikov a uh, long time ago. And they explained that it's uh, related to the divergence of trajectories. Uh, uh, in the uh, many bodies uh, system, uh, the scrambling uh, has two different regimes, uh, as indicated here. Uh, this regime is kind of incoherent. And that regime is coherent or holographic. Uh, and uh, it uh, corresponds to uh, uh, the following picture uh, on the gravity side. Uh, there are two perturbations that correspond to uh, shifts uh, near the two directions, uh, capital U and capital V. And uh, uh, there are actually shock waves uh, propagating along those directions. So uh, those shock waves um, are uh, the gravitational description of, of the uh, thermal field instability or scrambling. Uh, so if you imagine uh, uh, the picture above this line uh, shifting uh, along the U direction and uh, the picture uh, below uh, staying put, uh, it's, it's a sure mode. Uh, and such modes uh, were first considered by uh, Tuft and Dre a long time ago. And more recently, uh, Schenker and Stanford uh, uh, did uh, calculations in, in the black hole geometry, ADS geometry, and they even did uh, it in string theory. And next time, I'll, I'll show you my version of that calculation without strings, just uh, the semi-classical gravity. Can, can you yeah. briefly comment why you're calling this the strong coupling limit instead of the low temperature limit? It's low temperature. Uh, yeah, uh, because uh, when you do the diagrammatic expansion, uh, uh, the diagrams come uh, with powers of lambda. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, I, I, I'll, I, I hope I still have time to write the equation, so you'll, you'll see that. <laughs> so uh, uh, let me uh, finish this part. Uh, so in, in, in the gravitational uh, uh, picture, uh, there are uh, two modes, uh, two Schering modes, going this way or that way. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, these modes uh, only make sense uh, in this limit, uh, uh, copper equals uh, 2 pi over beta. And actually, this copper is uh, interpreted as the surface gravity, and this is uh, the Hawking relation. Uh, in the uh, original model, uh, the fermionic sites, uh, one can consider uh, uh, scrambling or uh, this four-point function uh, at any value of lambda. And uh, one can actually write uh, a kinetic equation. Uh, and uh, uh, this kinetic equation, uh, uh, it uh, 
sufficiently large times, times uh, much greater than couple minus one, uh, uh, is given uh, by a single mode. Uh, the kinetic equation is basically an integral equation with some kernel. Uh, the kernel has eigenvalues, and uh, there is one uh, largest eigenvalue. Uh, and uh, uh, let me call uh, this uh, uh, largest eigenvalue, or the corresponding mode, uh, a scrambling mode, or scramblon. And so <laughs> this correlation function is something like this. Uh, you can, uh, or this, this function. And there is a scramblon, <coughs> and uh, there is also C and A. And uh, this scramblon uh, uh, grows exponentially. And uh, there are also some vertex functions. And in the nonlinear regime, when it saturates, uh, it's actually a multiple scramblon exchange. It's like this. There are multi scramblon vertex, uh, vertices. Uh, it turns out that uh, in, this, uh, in this regime, in the holographic regime, uh, not only the exponent uh, matches uh, the gravitational answer, but uh, also the vertex function is the same, at least uh, uh, for a single scramblon. I, I haven't done it for uh, many scramblons. Uh, up to a factory, and actually uh, the factory is a bit tricky, so I want uh, I asked Tarun for extra time before part two because I want to calculate that factor. <laughs> <laughs> yes? What's the mass of the fermion in the gravity side? Uh, the mass uh, it is such that, um, uh, that uh, index delta, delta uh, in suitable units, it's one half plus m times r. And that should be three quarters. Yeah, three three quarters. Three quarters for the bus field, and uh, uh, for the dual field, uh, this chi, it will be one quarter. And uh, uh, the dual field has uh, some bad asymptotics at, uh, at infinity. Non normalizable. Uh, I guess the gamma function that you had before follows from the conformal symmetry. So exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> yeah, so you figured it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it took me a while to figure that. Um, so uh, uh, now, uh, I, I should warn you that uh, it's not a, a completely physical solution because the gravitational uh, answer is obtained in high dimensions. And uh, I just take the general form of that answer and uh, uh, say uh, uh, the dimension is one plus one. Uh, it's not quite satisfactory. However, uh, we can do the following thing. We can consider uh, uh, the background with two shock, uh, shock waves. And uh, we can calculate uh, uh, the effective action uh, of matter in this background, integrate over uh, the fermions in that background. And uh, we'll obtain some expression for the effective action uh, or variation of the effective action. And uh, it looks like uh, delta phi, phi is the effective action. And uh, it's uh, some constant A, which I also want to calculate, uh, divided by N delta U delta V. Uh, these are the magnitudes of uh, the shifts in the two directions, the, the magnitudes of the shock waves. Uh, and uh, this also works in one plus one dimension. Uh, and uh, amazingly, uh, there is a relation between delta phi and uh, uh, entropy. And uh, I also want to understand this relation. But, uh, uh, let me write it down. Excuse me? What was phi? Phi is the effective action. Uh, we're used to, the, to this situation. Uh, uh, when uh, the system is adiabatic, uh, it, uh, it, it is described by an effective Lagrangian, and there is some effective action. Uh, 
Uh, but adiabatic means that uh, the entropy doesn't change. In this case, we have uh, delta phi minus 2 pi. This is the entropy, uh, the change of uh, the entanglement entropy between the two parts. So uh, uh, the holographic dynamics is driven by uh, entanglement entropy. No, uh, uh, this is actually uh, in one plus one dimension because I'm integrating out uh, 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 that uh, psi field I showed. Uh, just the fermion. Just the fermion. So you have a fermion coupled to gravity, and you integrate out the fermion, yeah. and you get an effective action. R right, so you right. Do with type action, right? Uh, and then uh, I, I think in the end it's probably some kind of gravity coupled to an extra field. Uh, yeah, I suspect it's gravity plus scalar field, but uh, I'm not sure. Uh, this entanglement entropy, this is the gravitational entropy or the some entropy computed in the theory of fermions? Uh, that I don't know. Uh, it's some kind of entropy. Uh, well, uh, uh, you can imagine the following, uh, the following situation. Uh, for uh, uh, fermions in a gravitational field, uh, let's uh, uh, consider only uh, the physical wedge uh, above the horizon. And uh, we can uh, think of this physical wedge as uh, a scattering uh, problem. Uh, there are waves that uh, come from the black hole and uh, they are reflected back. Uh, now, we introduce some perturbation. We change this uh, uh, reflection coefficients. and. Uh, uh, since it's a, a problem at finite temperature, it's basically a flow of energy or flow of entropy. If we introduce, uh, uh, if we turn on some perturbation, it will uh, change the entropy. Uh, here we're not turning on uh, perturbation. Uh, we have two perturbations. Uh, uh, one shock wave in real time is an exponentially growing perturbation, and the other shock wave in real time is an exponentially falling perturbation. Uh, but uh, still one can uh, consider uh, the effect in the second order for the entropy and for the effect of action. And uh, in this sense, this relation holds. So it's uh, uh, the entropy of uh, uh, the entropy in, in the S matrix, in the scattering problem. Not the scattering uh, matrix of the black hole, actually, the scattering matrix of the world outside the black hole. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe there is a better interpretation. So the statement would be the change of the effective action of gravity after integrating on the fermion is completely captured by the change, change in the entropy. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, in real gravity, I cannot do that uh, because um, uh, most of the modes are beyond control. They are at Planck scale. Uh, so, but uh, one can just do mode by mode. If we consider a mode uh, uh, with a certain angular momentum, we can uh, do this procedure and obtain this relation. Question? Yeah. Is, is there, uh, this expression almost looks like the Robinson bound of some kind. Uh, is, does, it, does it have anything to do with the Robinson bound? If I go back to the spin model mm -hmm. and try to bound this unequal time correlation function with Einstein, uh -huh. the Robinson kind of bound, yeah. is it related to it? Are you saying that the the Robinson velocity is sort of like to bio state? I don't know. Is there I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you're referring to this uh, re re recent result uh, uh, by uh, Schenker, uh, Stenthorff, and Moldesina. Uh, yeah, the yeah, yeah uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But uh, there is no real velocity because uh, it's an infinite range model. Right. Uh, there's no uh -huh. So uh, a 
let me explain uh, something about this model, how one calculates the two-point function and how uh, uh, the conformal symmetry arises in the large coupling limb. And uh, uh, I'll do it, uh, it uh, in imaginary time. So I'll, I'll use the Matsubara technique. So let's define uh, the green function on side J, but uh, it's actually independent of J. Uh, it's by definition minus this thing And uh, uh, we can do it uh, for a f uh, free fermionic side. And we get uh, G of tau uh, is equal to uh, one half minus one half because of this minus sign. Uh, This is the unperturbed green function. Then uh, we can uh, do the expansion in lambda. Uh, so. Uh, Are you imagining a quadratic term added to this? Uh, no, uh, it's a finite temperature, uh, finite temperature case, and uh, uh, at finite temperature you don't need a quadratic term to have uh, the zero sort of approximation. Yeah, yeah, it is periodic in imaginary time, in tau. Tau goes from uh, and uh, actually it's a circle, so it's uh, uh, zero uh, identified with beta and it's anti Oh, yeah, 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 thank you, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, 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 so uh, the Lagrangian is Uh, oh, this is the action. D, d tau. Uh, this is in real time, but uh, anyway. R right, so uh, it is this thing. Um, Uh, uh, let's do the di diagrammatic expansion. Uh, um, the full G uh, is uh, this thing, which is uh, G naught, and uh, it's from side J to uh, side J, uh, plus uh, the next term will look like this. Uh, it's uh, J, sorry, uh, J is here, uh, uh, and uh, K uh, L and M, and these are the interaction vertices. And I should also draw a dotted line, which means that uh, these two interactions are correlated because uh, we want to have reach over the disorder. And uh, uh, we're adding extra terms like and we can insert uh, the same thing in here and uh, we can continue. There is a bunch of terms. Uh, it, it kind of fractal structure. Uh, now, uh, this is an expansion in lambda. And if lambda is large, it's going to diverge. Uh, there is some convergence radius, I believe. But uh, it's not a problem, because we can still write uh, uh, the Dyson equation and solve it. Uh, so. 
uh, this is uh, in the limit of large N because uh, the correlations, uh, these dotted lines, uh, uh, per wrap uh, certain vertices. Otherwise, it would uh, be too complicated. So, uh, uh, the Dyson equation diagrammatically is this. Uh, well, uh, let me just uh, write it uh, in the usual way, and uh, I'll draw the diagram for sigma. And uh, and uh, this is the obvious diagram. This is after the average. Yeah, yeah, after the average. Yeah. And uh, there is also a normalization condition. You're averaging the Green's function? Uh, we're averaging the Green's function. Yeah, over the disorder. Uh, now, uh, this equation is first appear, uh, in a paper by Saj Defenier in 1993, and they considered uh, uh, SUN spins. Uh, actually, a more complicated model than mine. But uh, I just figured that I can simplify this model a little bit and uh, avoid extra pain. Uh, so uh, they actually found a solution in the following limit. Uh, it's uh, Omega is much smaller than J and much greater than beta to the minus 1. And uh, that assumes uh, strong coupling because uh, the coupling constant uh, is beta times J. And uh, uh, the solution uh, that they found is. Um, So it's in the upper half plane. Uh, it in, uh, includes uh, uh, I omega n as a special case. And uh, this uh, coefficient is pi over j squared to the 1 fourth. OK. So uh, the important thing is this, this exponent, omega to the minus 1 half. Uh, it determines the, uh, the scaling. Uh, the next uh, uh, step was done uh, by uh, Parkolet and Georges in nine, 1998, I think. Uh, they uh, solved these equations, uh, again, for some uh, more complicated model. They were interested in, in, in the Hubbard model close to half filling and uh, things like that. Uh, but uh, they solved this equation uh, for uh, omega of the order of beta to the minus 1. And uh, they wrote the solution and said that using uh, Gretstein and Rizek, one can verify the solution. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was uh, impressed how they uh, found that solution. They, they just guessed it or what. Uh, 
but I, I verified it, and uh, in the hindsight, it's very easy to guess the solution because it follows from the conformal symmetry. So, uh, let me write the conformal symmetry. So, uh, if we look at uh, those equations, uh, there is a term I times omega n. Uh, at strong coupling, this term may be neglected. That's the key. Uh, now, the equation, uh, the Dyson equation, becomes this. Uh, G times sigma is 1, which may be written in, in, in this form. Uh, it's the integral, I'll uh, do it in the time domain, and uh, the other equation is uh, This system of equation uh, uh, admits uh, arbitrary reparameterizations re in terms of tau. So we can consider the following symmetry. Uh, This is the derivative. The full G of tau. Yeah, uh, we don't have uh, the, free, uh, the free thing anymore. The free thing is uh, I times M again, uh, we have neglected. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, it's a symmetry uh, of the equations. Uh, the solution. Uh, does not have the full symmetry, the full reparameterization symmetry. However, the solution uh, has uh, uh, a subgroup of the full conformal group. It's uh, the, Möbius, the Möbius group. Actually, it's the full group because this thing, if we do uh, analytic continuation, uh, it does not always work. Uh, so uh, we uh, can try the following solution. Yeah, it's the only exponent that works for this equation okay. because of this cube. Yes? Is the symmetry present on the zero temperature? The symmetry is present at zero temperature, yes. Or at very low temperature compared to J. 
uh, now uh, we try this uh, solution. We uh, use uh, f of tau equal to e to the 2 pi i tau over, over beta. And we look uh, for a solution like this. It's some j tilde of f of tau 1, f of tau 2 times f prime of tau 1 to the 1 minus delta, f prime of tau 2 to the 1 minus delta. And uh, uh, this G tilde uh, will be uh, a scaling invariant function, uh, basically a power law. Uh, G tilde of uh, Z1, Z2 uh, is uh, some constant times uh, Z1 minus Z2 raised to this power and uh, uh, we plug it in here and we choose this constant C uh, so as to match uh, the known solution at large omega and uh, the answer is this. Uh, uh, this constant A. <coughs> yeah. So uh, that is ex exactly uh, the solution uh, percolate in George's font. And uh, one can plug it into the equations and check. Uh, so uh, uh, this is uh, basically the full story for uh, 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 the two-point function. When we calculate the four-point function, uh, this conformal symmetry uh, shows up uh, in an interesting way. Because uh, I mentioned scrambling. So the scrambling is, uh, it's a thermophile double. Uh, we introduce a perturbation and it somehow evolves. Uh, in uh, the large coupling limit, the perturbation is generated by the symmetry. If we apply the symmetry to both sides, the state remains invariant. If we only apply it to one side, uh, this is the, uh, the scrambling mode in, in, in the uh, strong coupling limit. And uh, I'll, I'll try to explain that uh, in part two. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Yeah. I, I, well, uh, I believe there is no phase transition, and uh, I rely on uh, Parkolite and Georges who calculated uh, uh, the solution numerically for different temperatures, and they didn't find any solution. Yeah, it's a crossover. But uh, of course, there are various instabilities uh, that might occur, so it's difficult to consider all possible instabilities. So the research that the paper wasn't there a spin glass paper? Yeah, yeah, it was a spin glass paper. Oh, I mean, does the randomness make any imprint on the dynamics? I mean, this randomness is a new thing for a 
from the gravity side? I mean, does it uh, well, uh, the randomness is a trick to avoid instability. Uh, if you introduce uh, a model without randomness and you, you are not very careful, uh, very often uh, there is some mode. If we uh, add enough randomness, that prevents uh, the instability from happening. But uh, you can possibly uh, construct a model without randomness. It just uh, has to be sufficiently complicated. So yeah. I Big recollection in, in the theories of localization back in the mm -hmm. early 80s, or the um, it made a difference whether you uh, disorder averaged over a quantum amplitude as opposed to the mod squared of a quantum amplitude, which would be a probability. Uh huh. And uh, that was a confusion early on in localization. It looks well. I'm just wondering whether that has any manifestation here. That if you uh, uh, ensemble average over a, a probability of some uh, dynamical. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. But that's, yeah. I mean, it might be qualitatively different. Uh, uh, well. Plus, possibly. I mean, maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll just uh, elaborate on the order sensor. Uh, uh, suppose we c uh, calculate uh, the four-point function in a much simpler model. It's uh, not uh, the quartic model, but uh, the quadratic model. Just random hopping from side to side. Mm -hmm. The four-point function uh, is a ladder. Uh, it's a uh, and if you uh, uh, how to say, if you think about uh, uh, this four-point function in the, in the quadratic model in a in naive way, uh, uh, it's just uh, a free system. Uh, you can use uh, Wick's, uh, Wick's theorem. And uh, naively, you, you could uh, plug the uh, two-point function uh, into uh, into the, the equation into a weak theorem, and uh, you, you would get the wrong answer. Uh, but uh, if you uh, average uh, this correctly over the disorder, this whole uh, whole ladder, uh, you get the correct answer. And uh, of course, uh, the calculation uh, for the four-point function is, is done with the correct averaging. So here you consider only these diagrams. Yeah, yeah, because of the light chain, yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this, that's a very good question. I, I also wanted to calculate that. I believe it's zero. I believe the, uh, the entropy is proportional to the temperature, but uh, not sure, not sure. It, there might be some uh, constant term. Uh, infinite. It can, uh, in, in, in what sense infinite? It's uh, it's all finite. It, it's, uh, it's a f well, it's extensive. Oh, extensive, No, no, it, it's not uh, zero temperature. It's finite temperature, finite but small. So everything, uh, the entropy is extensive in this limit anyway. The question is whether uh, the entropy per site uh, approaches zero at zero temperature or not. And uh, I don't know how to calculate it easily because I, I can calculate the derivative of the entropy. And then I have to integrate over temperature. It's kind of tricky. I mean, maybe there is an easier way. Well, I think if there's no more questions, let's thank Alexi again.